<laughs> I just I just can't I just can't get over the fact that Arsenal has lost again three losses in a row Spurs lost as well I mean these two teams they are most mostly mostly it's the Arsenal team they they're a bit of a joke but it's not about them it's about FA Cup Liverpool has made it to the final it's now up to us let's see what we can do <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. Welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. FA Cup, Chelsea versus Crystal Palace at Wembley semi-final preview. We've already just figured out that um, Liverpool are through. That was a very strange game between Liverpool and City. I mean, Liverpool looked like they were, you know, in a, in a, in a blockbuster mode. Um, they had their proper team on, literally their strongest team. Whereas Man City, few of their players, key players, missing Kevin De Bruyne, you know, Laporte, Ruben Diaz at the back. Um, yeah, it was it was a bit strange the way they've lined up, um, and and they looked flat. They looked like they were tired as well. And I'm not surprised because Atletico Madrid they had a war against Atletico Madrid a couple of days ago, and they got they got battered. Um, and moving into this game, they looked like a bit bit off the pace. It was nothing like the game that we saw last weekend when um, you know Liverpool played Manchester City and it was a blockbuster event. This one, Liverpool, even though there was a bit of a comeback coming, you know, coming on for Man City late on, but to be honest, Liverpool deserved to go through. Liverpool goes to the final, ladies and gentlemen, and I know we have to beat Crystal Palace, and if we do. I'm actually happy to face Liverpool. I really need to settle a score with this Liverpool team. Their fan base is so ultra cocky. And on top of that, they're, they're on track to maybe get a quadruple. Um, and I want to make sure that we're the team that breaks that up. And we need to win. And this is where I want to start the conversation for the preview, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Not only we need to beat Crystal Palace, which should be a regulation, no disrespect for uh, Crystal Palace one bit, we need to win this particular silverware. We need to finish this particular season with this silverware to ensure we can work on something, you know, take something to next season and develop on it. Um, yes, a lot of people will say we won the Super Cup, we won the Club World Cup, but many people seem to sort of disregard that. Me, personally, I don't disregard that one. I love those trophies. But we need to get this particular domestic trophy if we can we should go for it um go into the final and beat liverpool no excuses we should have beaten them in the carabao cup we had the more cleaner clearer chances they got away with it it went to the 11th penalty kick uh, and a miss from kepa for them to win uh, we made some epic saves as well through mendy um, yeah, off the back of Mane and salah's chances but for some reason, it suits us. It really suits us the way they play. But that's final if we reach. Let's now talk about, ladies and gentlemen, Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, they've got, they've had a whole week to prepare for this particular match. So they should be up for it. They should be raring to go. The issue is one of the key players, Conor Gallagher, is not able to play. We've refused um, him to play, uh, play against us. Thomas Tuka has said sorry to him. Apparently, he's bumped onto him a couple of weeks ago at a restaurant and actually apologized the fact that he can't play. And rightly so. This was the terms and conditions of the loan. And Crystal Palace knows exactly. We said you cannot play against us. Simple as that. So no point in putting in an application now and asking uh, for a favor that he can play. He's one of the best players. And we rather have Crystal Palace not playing with one of their best players against us. Gives us a better opportunity. On top of that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Olise and also um, Tarek Mitchell, who could be out for this particular match. Both very big players for them. Olise is a very, very good player for them. Winger, ex extreme uh, pace, explosive with the style he plays. And Tarek Mitchell as well, very strong left-sided player. Uh, is their, their left back. So once again, even though they've had a week to prepare, they've got some key members of their team not playing in this match. So for us, ladies and gentlemen, there's no excuse. Yes, we've had that disappointment, um, you know, against Real Madrid, but we played top. We played 
you know, as I said, post that particular match, I'm so proud of that team. Even though we didn't make it through, I'm so proud of that team, the way we played against Real Madrid. Hopefully the players can shake that off. It's not going to be easy. Obviously, you know, some parts uh, of that particular team could be still disheartened, could still carry that on, um, you know, that, that, that emotional factor. But we need to drop all of that and focus on this match. No complacency. Go out there, do a professional job and beat Crystal Palace. We should have enough enough firepower and our players had enough rest. So that was Tuesday night. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and the match is on Sunday. So four days we've had to prepare for this match. Um, I know Crystal Palace has had a week, but we, four days should be more than enough for our players to recover. I'm expecting a strong team. I really am. I'm really expecting a strong team. Let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do the... Um, Team selection right now. I'm going with this is an interesting one. Do I give Kepler an opportunity in the FA Cup semi final? And then Mendy, if we do hopefully go through to the final, then Mendy gets it. Uh, this is a strange one. I mean, Mendy doesn't need a break. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with my best goalkeeper. He doesn't need a break. I know a lot of people might say, Miz, it's for squad harmony and whatnot. Well, look, I need my best player best goalkeeper to play and for me my best goalkeeper is um is uh, mendy guys i am gonna continue with what has been working for us recently so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna change something that is not broken i'm gonna continue with the way thomas tuka has played against southampton and real madrid and continue that philosophy against Crystal Palace. Um, because the way I look at it is, if it's not broke, let's not fix it. Let's really not fix it. And if it's working at the moment in terms of for, for our attackers, why? Why try and fix it? So for me, ladies and gentlemen, Rudiger, I'm going with the back four. I really am. I'm going with the back four. This is how we set up against Southampton. And this is how we set up against Real Madrid as well. I'm going with that same situation. Rudy Silver pairing because they've had enough time. They've literally had enough time to recover. So for me, I don't see any rotation here. You saw what Man City, what, what happened when you rotate. We've got to be serious in this particular game. We have to take it seriously. You rotate and you get knocked out. I don't want any of these excuses that, oh, we played our B team. No need to play the B team. You play the strongest team. This is a serious game. Alonso, for me, look. He played, that was, against Real Madrid, that was his best performance I've seen in a very long time. Very long time. I'm talking about going back to maybe Conte days when he was exceptional. But that performance against Real Madrid, that was probably the best performance I've seen from Marcus Alonso. And if you're going to be on the left side, let's go with Marcus Alonso. Reese James plays right back, ladies and gentlemen. And Reese James can tuck in as, 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 you know, if we need to make it a back three. And then you've got the auxiliary sort of, wing back situation happening off the ball ladies and gentlemen we have to remember with the ball how we attack and what formation we attack with and without the ball how do we defend two different formations that we that we use and we've been fluid like that deepest midfielder for me i know a lot of people have been arming and ahhing about kante kante plays for me kante plays for me uh, for me yes he's made some mistakes in recent times but He's the best one that I've won playing in this. He's been disciplined as well, more or less. Yes, he had some laps of concentration against Southampton and against Real Madrid as well, which costed us goal. But I'm going with Kante. I'm going with Kante because I can't see Jorginho playing in that role and get outrun, outmuscled. He can come off the bench. Kovacic, the left-sided midfielder. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, the right-sided midfielder. And in fact, I'm actually not going to go with. I'm, I'm actually going to go with something like this, more mount in the middle, more like a diamond, I suppose. That's the formation that we've been going with lately. Uh, mount trying to find the gaps in between wherever um, uh, to fit in, more or less just behind the two strikers. I'm going with mount over here. And I'm continuing with Timo Werner. 
I, I see no reason to drop this particular player. He's played well against Southampton. He's played well against Real Madrid. It will be very disheartening to drop a player like Timo Werner now when he's been... Against Real Madrid, he was probably borderline man, man of the match for us, along with Mason Mount. Um, so for me, Timo Werner, if this formation works for him, let's go. Let's let's attack with his pace. And his partner will be Havertz. And then off the bench, you'll have the likes of Ziyech, Pulisic, so on and so forth. Lukaku is apparently fit as well. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my team. I'm going for the strongest team for me. This is the team that did the damage against Southampton. This is the team that's done the damage against Real Madrid. I'm continuing on. It's not broke. Let's not fix something that is not broke. If it doesn't work out, then we'll see what we do in-game. And we'll, we'll get back into the drawing board again. But for right now, I see no justification as to how we deter away from that team. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my team. Mendy, Rudiger, Silva, Alonso, Reese, James, Kante, Kovacic, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Mount, Havertz, Werner. I'm going for a routine, hopefully 2 new, 3 new even. Once again, as I said, not disrespecting Crystal Palace one bit. I just feel like hopefully we're on a bit of a high, the way we played against Southampton, the way we could play it against Real Madrid. Hopefully the players can come out and not be complacent. We have to make it to the final of FA Cup. It's a serious game. I hope the boys go out there and do the business. Let me know what your thoughts are, ladies and gentlemen, of that particular team I've got out there. What's your score prediction? How you feel about this particular match? Do you think we're going to make it to the final? And obviously, Liverpool is awaiting the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys have enjoyed this preview. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see ya. And we'll see you in the watch along.